This morning we want to talk for just a moment about who the promise is for. The promise of the Holy Spirit. If you would, turn to Acts chapter 2 and read with me from 37 to 47, the King James Version. Hallelujah. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter, to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they gladly received his word, were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship in the breaking of bread and prayers. And the fear came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods, parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continually daily, how often? Daily, with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Verse 47, praising God, having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for the promise of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the relationship we can have through remarkable conversion that takes place when you draw us to yourself, Lord. And now, God, as added gift and benefit from the heavens, You've given us the free gift of the Holy Spirit that we might walk as one in the power of your name and be an example to the world that we have been with Christ. In your name we pray, amen. Who is this promise for? We find out right away in verse 39 of Acts chapter 2. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord shall call. John 6, says, No man can come to me except the Father who hath sent me draw him. I will raise him up at the last day. You see, no man or woman can be saved, can know the Father, unless the Spirit of God draws him to him. You see, it's a miracle work of conversion. It's not a decision of man or woman's intellect to decide to change. We can't. That's why I believe there's so many frustrated Christians sitting in the pews because they've never had a, what I call a born again experience. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. How can I climb back in my mother's womb and be born again? That's what he said. He says, you're a teacher of the law. Don't you understand what scripture has said? The Messiah would come and he would die and rise for you and give you new life. It's a free gift, but you have to be called. I've seen a lot of these graduates have had parties. I didn't go to any of them. You know why? I wasn't asked to come. <laughs> If you show up and you're not called, or I'm not one of these that breaks into people's weddings because I saw the advertisement of their cake and said, you know what? <laughs> I like that. I'm going to go. I wasn't asked to come. No man or woman can be saved unless they're invited. Do you understand what I'm saying? We see these mass, big audiences with people preaching. Now, if you'll just come forward... And if you'll just say the prayer, you'll be saved. No. I can't call anyone to salvation. 
No man can. Only the Holy Spirit deals with a man's heart. As I preach this word, it's said in that first verse, and they were pricked in their hearts. Something touched them. That's why we need the preaching of God's unadulterated, unchanged gospel. Because without that, faith cannot enter into your life. Therefore, salvation cannot and won't enter your life. We have buildings full with people that are dying and going to hell because they don't hear this word preached every Sunday or Wednesday or when they come together. That man or woman would be held accountable to God because without the preaching of the gospel, the Holy Spirit has nothing to draw from. Jesus, help us, O oh God. How do we know we've been called by the Father to salvation? Scripture says, your spirit will bear witness with his spirit. Nowhere in there does it ever say, go ask the pastor. No. Go ask your Sunday school teacher. Go ask your mom and dad. No. Never tell anyone unless the spirit has told you to, oh, you're saved now. Only the father can say that to someone's spirit. It says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. For with confession, a man renounces Jesus as Lord, and only the Holy Spirit can cause you to do that. Only the Holy Spirit. Jesus told Peter, it was a man that told you that I am Jesus the Messiah. It was my father in heaven. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5, 17, my memory verse for this week. Hallelujah. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Let's look at some key word here. The word if. Therefore, if. You're in Christ. How do we know we're in Christ? You will know. He will let you know. He will draw you. He's a new creature. You're different. When I got saved at 10 years old, I walked away different. I was not the same Art Braden. I was changed. I wasn't perfect, but my nature had changed. Who I was was no longer identified the same. Remember the movie, The Body Snatchers? Yeah, well, you, you, she's probably got it on. Hey, first movie I like, top 10. <laughs> they died to the self by falling asleep, and the next day they were changed. No love, no feeling, no nothing, nothing. Just existence. But they were changed. There will be a radical change happen in your life when Jesus Christ does the work. Hallelujah. Listen to this. The word if is found 1,595 times in 1,420 verses in the King James Version of the Bible. This word is powerful. And in the verse found in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it's eternal. How do we know we are really saved? What has changed in your life since you've given your life to Jesus Christ and this miracle has taken place? transformation that takes place in your life. You literally become a new creature, as said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Old things, lifestyles, old habits, old desires, your desires change. Hallelujah. It says, behold, all things are become new. You no longer desire to do the things you used to do. You're continually fulfilling the desires of your flesh in the old sinful nature. That doesn't mean you won't be tempted. The word of God says Jesus will tempt it in every way, but did not sin. What did he tell the woman? They were going to stone. He says, go. Your sins are forgiven of you. Go and sin no more. Who can give her that power? Not herself. She sinned regularly. Trust me. Okay. She sinned regularly. 
But when Jesus spoke these words into her life, he gave her the power to walk a life without sin. You don't have to sin. The word of God says, but if you sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins if you repent. That doesn't mean to say, I'm sorry, but I'm going to do it next again, next week again anyway. You see, your flesh can be, why don't you be honest with your flesh? Be honest with yourself. If you've not had a divine change in your nature, maybe it's because you've not been born again. And I'm not, God's not knocking you and I'm not knocking you. You're frustrated. You don't understand why you continually have that desire for more and more and more of the flesh. You need to be born again. Hallelujah. We will love and pursue the things of God over the things of the world. And at the age of 10 years old, they handed me my first Bible. The only Bible I knew we had was a four-leaf clover in it and with some other little letters from this, that, and the other. And it sat in a drawer somewhere, and we dug it out once while I looked at it. What is this? Uh, it's Bible. Okay. When I got that book, it changed what I thought about that book. There was a person named Jesus Christ written in that book, and I couldn't wait to read it. No one sent me to school or off to class. He changed me. Hallelujah. You cannot do this in yourself. You must have a miracle conversion that took place by the Holy Spirit coming and abiding in you. This makes you a candidate now for the promise of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. I will say this, you are not a candidate even for water baptism unless you've had a conversion experience. Why would you want to just take another bath? <laughs> Listen to me. I don't do unchristian weddings, and I don't, definitely don't do unchristian water baptisms. Oh, I feel the need to be baptized in water. Why? Why do you want to baptize in water? Have you decided to change your life and truly take up the cross and follow him the rest of the days of your life? Well, I know I need to do it because if I don't, I might go to hell. Wrong answer. By the way, if you're interested and want to be water baptized, please come see me and I'll write you down. Because some, for the right reasons. And we will be having a class. Just because your name's on the list does not mean you'll be baptized. For too long, we've made it so simple. Hey, little Johnny wants to be baptized. Why? It looks like a good thing. I'm not making fun, folks. Water baptism is a serious. Communion is serious. In fact, the Word of God says in communion, when you do it without communion with Him, you eateth and drinketh your soul into damnation. So if you want to come see me for water baptism, we're all thinking, I ain't going to Him. Forget that. If you're interested in water baptism, please come see me. We'll put you on a list. And sometime at the end of the next month, during the Sunday school hour, I will meet with you and we will talk about what water baptism is and the reasons, desires for why you want to be water baptized. Amen? You must be born again. You must have had an experience that changed your life. There's no age criteria. It blessed my heart to hear that little Bill's thinking about wanting to be baptized in water. I know of young kids at that age and earlier that genuinely gave their lives to Christ. It blesses my heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm sure we won't be looking for a long testimony of why he decided. <laughs> Bill's not that much of a talker unless you get him. <laughs> <laughs> But, he, but if you get him in the right mode in the right area, he will. He will. Trust me, won't he? <laughs> but please come see me. It's something the Lord's been dealing with me, and I really believe that even if you've been baptized in water and you want to make a fresh commitment, please, we'll talk, okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Number one reason that we find how we know that we're a candidate is conviction takes place. They were pricked in their hearts. I sat there as a 10-year-old boy through that whole sermon, feeling what I didn't know then, but was the Holy Ghost. 
I was crying, and my sister next to me, I didn't even look at her. I didn't look at nobody. I said, I don't know what's going on, but something's breaking inside of me. That whole time, that Baptist minister, Brother Roberts, he preached the word of God. And he said, is there anyone here who would like to become a part of the family of God? My sister, we didn't look at each other. We didn't look around, well, is there anybody else? I'll come up and be a part of that group. No. Boom. And we looked at each other, and we just, yeah. She might be three years older than me, but we're the same age spiritually. Hallelujah. We're twins in the Lord. <laughs> Speaking of which, never mind. I won't go there. <laughs> Conviction. I think you know where I was going with that one. Okay. <laughs> Lord, I pray Jesus' name. Rise and be healed. Okay. Conviction must take place. Acts 2.37. Now, when they heard this, what, what did they hear? What did Peter do? Go ahead, tell me. He preached the word. Big mouth Peter. Foot and mouth disease. Got filled with the Holy Ghost. And finally got it all right. Amen. He preached the word of God. He preached about Jesus. From the Old Testament until the appointed time. You have killed this Jesus. But he rose again. He's changed our lives. This is that which you've seen prophesied in Joel chapter 2. You should speak with new tongues. We're not drunk as you suppose. We're filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And then they say, when after they heard this message, they were pricked in their hearts and said, Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men, brethren, what shall we do? They realized they needed a change. If the very first thing you feel in your heart before an altar call, you don't really feel there needs to be a change. You're just doing it because... It's a political right thing to do. Stay in your seat. That sounds hard, don't it? Because all you're doing is going through the motions. If you feel a tug and pull in your heart, don't wait another moment. Run to the altar. We used to have a thing in, when I was in youth. Yeah, they used to have youth programs back when I was a young person. You know, Pebbles and Bam Bam were there. and okay. Flintstone, Fred Flintstone was the teacher. No, uh, but once a month, we would meet and have these services. I miss those things. Because every month, I would run to the altar and ask forgiveness. I was immature. I asked God for forgiveness throughout the rest of the times. But I wanted to, in my heart, publicly confess before the Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me. All the time. <laughs> they began to question the disciples and asking, what shall we do? This was a sign. They were seeking something more, far bigger than themselves. Something they couldn't handle. Something they knew they couldn't change in themselves. Something they knew they needed something different than what they had. What the Pharisees and Sadducees were dishing out wasn't changing their lives. I heard a young lady last week say she went to a different, she had a different denomination she used to go to. She says, I don't understand everything you're doing here, but what I saw, I liked. I asked her, I said, are you a Christian? She goes, oh, yes. But where I went was dead. There was no life. She says, I feel life here. It's not a matter of preference of praise band, lights, this, that, and the other. It's the spirit of God. If I thought for one moment, these things here, or what we do up here, would hold back the Holy Spirit, they'd be gone today. Amen. I am as serious as can be. Leaving the heart attack out. Okay. It was a sign they needed to change. It was a sign of confession and acceptance to their dilemma. Their first step toward the truth. They needed salvation and they needed to confess it to Jesus. Peter couldn't save them. No man, no, none of the apostles could save them. But the one who came and died and rose again can. It's a spiritual gift from the Father. You see, the promise has come. But first, the promise of salvation. Then he brings us to repentance and water baptism and then the free gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, now that they were explained that they needed to repent, number two, they need to repent, turn, turn from their path of their, their way they were going and they needed a savior and through genuine conviction of the Holy Ghost and with his power, they were able to make a 180 degree turn from sin and put their lives in the arms of Christ. Not because they said just some simple prayer. 
and a prayer offered up in faith, they shall be heard by God and be saved. For the word of God says in Joel chapter 2 also, and those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe we're heading into a time period when everybody's foundations to see crumble. They're going to say, I need a savior. They're going to come to the church. And what are we going to have to offer them? You see, not this building. You're the church. They're going to come to you. Your neighbors are going to say, Mark, what's going on? And he's going to declare to them, it's a promise of the father. You need to be saved because it's coming soon for his bride. He wants you to be a part of it. Simple as that. We need living water. There is a river that flows from the fountains of God. Acts 2.38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What got their attention was the power of the Holy Spirit and them hearing them praise God in their own language. And these people are all Hebrews, Jews, and what? What's going on here? Naturally, the world will try to disclaim and say, oh, they're just drunk. It's just gibberish. Well, that's fine if it's just gibberish, but how are they praising God in, mind in, his, in our name, in their own language? Hallelujah. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Number three, you receive. God didn't make it difficult, did he? If he pricks your heart and then you confess to Jesus, he comes in. Now he says, just receive. The Holy Spirit is a free gift from the Father. He has come to give you power. For what? We said it last week. For peace, power, and his presence. He's come to abide in your life. Acts 2.39 says, For the promises unto you and to your children and to all who fall off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. As the Lord our God shall call. It's not a church thing. It's not a bylaws and constitution thing. It's not a, you're in eighth grade now, so you need to go through a class now. And then you pass a test, you're saved. I'm not knocking those things. But what I am saying it's by faith through grace that you're saved. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Jesus. The key here is to the Lord has called. He is not, this is our decision. Alone. You see, without the full knowledge of the Holy Spirit revealing us to the Father, how can we say I want to be saved. Saved from what? Who's going to do the work? God the Father is the only one who can draw you to that. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. You must believe upon the name of Jesus Christ. In talking to a young man at the picnic, he believed that all religions pointed to God, ultimately. I took out the key in my pocket. See if I can get just that key. It's the same key. Hey, anybody want this key? You know what it's key to? Hey, ain't salvation. It's my car. So don't get excited. Hey, you don't want the key. But uh, it's the key to my car. I pulled it out. I said, you see this key? This key here opens only the door to one of these cars. Not all of them. One. I said, if I go up to your car, anybody else's car, and put, try to put that in there, all I'm going to do is jam it up and cause scratches or whatever. But if I place this key into my car door or into my ignition, I have power to go wherever it will take me. I said, you see, Jesus Christ is the door. He is the key 
to getting into heaven to the Father. So why would he leave anybody else into that house that he's preparing that does not hold the key? He just looked at me. His eyes are big as silver dollars. You see, when you share your, 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 your testimony of faith in simple forms just like that, the Holy Spirit can work on them. You don't always have to go down the Romans road, though it's great to know those things. Awesome. But what you really need to know is Jesus. You want to share the truth and testify? You need to know who you're testifying about. You need to have a relationship with him. Are you struggling with your witness? Get in contact with the person you need to be found guilty of. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is the key. The Father must draw you. You don't get that burning in your soul for a change all on your own. Doesn't happen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God and the word of God through the Holy Spirit draws you. That's how we're changed. That's how we become a candidate for the Holy Spirit. He says, well, Hardy, how do I know that I'm saved? You're a new creature. Your desires are to please the Father. And if that isn't your heart, then you need to find a place of prayer and say, God, reveal yourself to me. Because God's word says, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what his word says. And you notice as I've been preaching, the voice has come back quite a bit. You see, the devil's a liar. He can try to distort the word. And that's the only way he can get me to distort the word. It's just by sound alone. Because I'm not going to run from the path of the truth. Because the truth should set me free. And if I'm free, those that I bring the bread of life to, they as well can receive freedom through the word of Jesus Christ. I see hungry hearts this morning. Hearts that want to be closer to Jesus Christ than ever before. Keep being hungry. Keep being thirsty. He said, because you will be filled. We're going to close with a word of prayer. And if you need conclusion in prayer at these altars, there'll be altar music playing. And you want to come to these altars, you're more than welcome to come. We have graded seasons of prayer and interceding in the times of prayer for people's needs during the offering time. But you know what? You can never have enough prayer. Never. And if you need prayer this morning for anything, I will be up here to pray with you. No matter what it is. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes in prayer. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you. God, that you're on the throne. And I thank you, God, that this promise is for all and even for us, God. The power of the Holy Spirit draws. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that compels us to become more and more like you. You see, it's your word through your Holy Spirit that draws us, Father. We thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit and for your word today. With every eye closed, if you would just signify with an upraised hand that this message has touched you and that God has drawn you to a closer relation with him. If you would just lift that hand, I see those hands. I see those hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You put them down. Maybe this morning you were that one I was talking about that. Man, you just trip and fall all the time. You just can't seem to find a break. You don't really know if you've had a born-again experience. If that's you this morning, just lift your hand to the Lord. You and the Lord can come to this altar, and you can walk out of here with the blessed assurance, with faith and knowing, I am saved. If that's you this morning, lift your hand to the Lord. You say, I have doubts in my spirit. I have doubts in my heart. I don't know. I question we all go through those times, but there's an immediacy because you've had this in your spirit for some time. If that's you, just lift your hand to the Lord. He will see it and see the truth, and that truth will set you free. Anyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If not, let's all stand. Hallelujah. We're going to close in prayer. 
I pray you would have a blessed day. Again, if you're interested in water baptism, please come see me. We'll put you down, and I will let you know of a class we'll sometime have soon in June. Hallelujah. And don't also forget tonight, intercessory prayer at 6 o'clock, praying for souls, for each other, for missionaries, whatever the Lord draws upon our hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, that, Lord, you have touched our lives. I thank you, God, that, Lord, right now, you would just begin to move by your Spirit upon us. That, God, that we would walk by faith and not by sight. That, God, that, Lord, Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to the Father is through the Son. We thank you, God. Pray your blessing upon your people. That you would bless them in every area of their lives. That your hand of protection be upon them. That God, that you would guide them into all truth by the power of your spirit. Lord, bless this, your body and your church. and All the communities they live in. Let their light so shine that they might see the good works of Christ. And recognize they've been in the presence of the Father. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Greet one another love before you leave this place.